civil society organizations such as the African Center for Biodiversity considers interventions directed at seed security and seed sovereignty of utmost importance. Their call is for multi-stakeholder corporations to step up, support and strengthen farmer-managed seed systems. There is, however, considerable debate about the most appropriate type and level of intervention to ensure seed security in the country and throughout the continent. With the coexistence of different interventions and agencies, the governance of seed has become very relevant, questioning what collaborative arrangements between government, business and civil society can help to effectively address seed insecurity. South Africa's two main pieces of seed legislation, the Plant Breeders' Rights Act and the Plant Improvement Act, are under review at the moment. Two draft seed bills threaten to restrict farmer seed rights and activities even further under laws designed for commercial operations. There was a strong civil society and farmer response to the proposed bills. Almost all the provinces raised issues with the bills in Parliament. More than that, to claim our political space, to claim our space to have our conversation around the issues that are important to us. This session on seed policy from the National Seed Dialogue and Celebration, hosted by the African Centre for Biodiversity at Constitution Hill in December 2017, discusses the main issues and ways forward. The PIA, the Plant Improvement Act and the PBR, um, Plant Breeders' Rights Act, currently under, under revision, were both developed in the 1970s. So we must remember that it also comes from um, a, different era, a different era during apartheid and it's important that we recognize also that this is actually where these laws come from. They're highly skewed in terms of, um, in favor of industrial agriculture and industrial plant breeding um, for the cultivation of improved and genetically modified um, varieties on large scale monocropping commercial farming systems. The important thing of especially the Plant Improvement Act is and will be the, the bill when it's enacted. It is only applicable and it will only regulate the kinds of plants that are being declared in terms of the Act. So it's only the, the maize, the tomato, the onion, the pumpkin, those are our basic foodstuffs, but it's only those that are regulated. All those crops that have been traditionally grown, even those that I don't know about, they are not regulated. And nothing is stopping anybody to produce seeds, to exchange, to do whatever you like with those crops. So that's the important thing, I think. Please don't be limited by the legislation on the uh, the more commercial crops. The indigenous crops, the traditional crops, they are free, it belongs to the people. It's only if there would be uh, new varieties developed, and those varieties, if they are developed, must comply with the distinctness, uniformity and stability <coughs> standards. <laughs> Ideas about the trade of seed and what is allowed to be exchanged and sold is, for me, is a very big issue actually, and I think it's not being dealt with in a way that that we can really understand. Um, first of all, with the, the the fact that only, you know, that that only seed that is on the national variety list that is registered on the national variety list that is allowed to be traded, action. So mm -hmm. it, commercially, but actually trade it. I mean, because we're talking on, we, there's no definition of non-commercial scale. And that's also very important that this is a big issue that we've raised. And it should be dealt with here. You know, people do make money off the sale of seed, even on small quantities. And quality is still important, even on small quantities. It doesn't take away the fact that many people who maybe farm on one hectare, less than one hectare, or up to 10 hectares or more, they, quality is important, so that, that it doesn't take away this fact. But 
the, when, you, when we say that only certain crops that are regulated by this, these acts are a part of this, but things like maize, things like tomatoes, things like potatoes, these, we have local varieties, we have land races of maize. These are important crops for subsistence smallholder farmers. It's, it's, it's not only these side indigenous leafy greens, it's, it's major food crops that, that we need to also ensure that there's one, that there's quality, two, that these land races are, are, and local varieties are able to be circulated, that they're allowed to be maintained. Um, and surely it can't be up to NGOs, NGOs to, be, and, and to educate farmers to make sure that farmers are aware that they shouldn't accept seed from government. I mean, it should, the government, you know, it's supporting farmers and distributing seed and, and chemicals to poorest, the poorest people in our society. Government is intentionally handing out small um, corporate seed to smallholders in the form of hybrids and GMOs. And we've done testing in the most remote areas where people are intentionally trying to keep their seed pure. So if you have all these criteria that then criminalize and penalize smallholders who then might have corporate seed in their system, it's completely unfair. The concerns from the farmers were the bills they tend to benefit com commercial farmers and therefore they are promoting one system of agriculture and as such they are thus pushing away the small farmers, the, the seed of the small farmers. And there were other concerns of the definition of cell, because that definition was too wide. It had to be amended to allow for buttering, like what we're doing now, sharing and uh, trading without money involve involvement. There was fear of losing indigenous uh, uh, plants by rural communities, because now if then these bills were being accepted as they were, it meant that uh, the, the smallholder farmers and the small farmers, communal farmers, would have been thrown away. The criteria around the trade, the marketing of seed, of seed production, phytosanitary measures, are based on international standards. Um, most of these standards, such as the dish requirements, they, they are just, in many ways, it's very inappropriate, they're not suitable, they're very expensive, very onerous processes, not possible really for farm activities, farmer managed seed systems, or for farmer varieties to be able to participate in the system. These plants that are also very important for subsistence, not only for subsistence, just for nutrition, for household nutrition, aren't included, they are just completely neglected, unfortunately, and, and not on the radar whatsoever. So what happens to our diversity as we move into a future where we really need all, all the resources and we know they're in the hands of small, smallholder farmers or they're in the hands of, of our uh, plant genetic resources and our gene banks. It's, it's so disconnected and totally lacks the idea of what happens on farm and farm is where conservation takes place and where adaptability, real breeding, co-evolution, that's where we need to focus. Sabatia, 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 sabatia